Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Sunday. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. We have two great guests, former Speaker Newt Gingrich and Eric Hovde, the Wisconsin Republican candidate for the Senate. But before we get to them, I'm officially appointing myself a fact checker. A fact checker. A billion dollars is being spent by Kamala Harris and her team to lie to you, the American people, and lie they do. The media are lying to you. The so-called moderators during the debates, they're lying to you. Why? I'm going to take two issues that seem to be at the top of the list, immigration and abortion. And in 10 or 12 minutes, I'm going to explain to you why these are false issues, phony issues that they are lying about. And for, for the life of me, I cannot understand why conservatives, Republicans, whether they're on TV or radio, or running for office, don't read the information so they know how to respond. So let's start this way. Now let's deal with abortion. First, let's deal with the 1973 decision Roe v. Wade. I've written about it, I think, in my first book. Now, let's get to the basics. Roe v. Wade created the so-called trimester system. First three months, second three months, last three months. And what did it say? That you have an absolute right to an abortion in the first three months of pregnancy. Then it said in the second three months, you can have some government regulation, but that that would be carefully reviewed by a court. Now, what about the third three months, the final trimester? They said states can restrict or even ban abortions. This is Roe v. Wade. In the last trimester, as the baby reaches the point where it can live outside the womb. That's what the decision says. That the third trimesters, the states can regulate abortions in quite significantly. Roe v. Wade. Now, what is it that the Democrats want to do? Well, you know what they wanted to do. They had a bill come up in May 2022. 2022. And this is the bill that Kamala Harris said she would introduce and that we would pass. And this is why they're upsetting all these apparently suburban women. I see these liberals on these panels. I see the propagandists talk about Oh my goodness, abortion may be the number two issue. And that's why Trump has this big divide that women don't want to support him. Well, what would the Democrats do? They would abolish all state regulations, every one of them. They would abolish any ban on partial birth abortion. That is, even if the baby's in the birth canal ready to, to be born, a state could not prohibit an abortion. That is really the killing of that baby. They would abolish virtually all safety regulations. They would abolish all parental notification requirements. So if you have a minor, they're pregnant, they want to have an abortion, moms and dads would not be told. They would abolish all conscious rights. Doctors, maybe it's a, a doctor who's Catholic or, and so forth, he said, I, don't, I can't perform this. You would lose your license. They would abolish all carve-outs for faith-based hospitals. You know, you have hospitals that are run by nuns and that sort of thing. They would abolish it. And they would require you, the federal taxpayer, to pay for abortions. That none of this is in Roe v. Wade. None of it. This is the most extreme proposed bill that the Democrats voted on. And 49 of them supported it on the face of the earth, on the face of the earth. This is not codifying Roe v. Wade in any way. Now, they lie about Trump. Trump opposes a national, a federal ban on abortion. He has said it over and over and over again. Yet they lie. And they say if he becomes president, there's going to be a national ban on abortion. No, there's not. He favors exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother, the mother's health. By the way, many states do. He favors state decision making. We're a diverse country. Everybody's not from San Francisco or New York City or L.A. And so states can make these decisions and states will make these decisions, basically the citizens of the states. He never even suggested government monitors that Kamala Harris keeps bringing up. So she's a liar. She's a liar on where the Democrats stand on abortion. She lies about what Roe v. Wade says. She lies about what Donald Trump says. And she lies about something else. This case in Georgia. Hospital that delayed emergency abortion bears blame for Georgia woman's death. Families, lawyers claim. Listen to this, please, because she's all over the country lying about this. The family of a Georgia woman who died after undergoing a medication abortion, the pill, 
It was subsequently cited by Democrats as a tragic example of red states restrictive abortion laws is blaming the hospital for the woman's death and reading a lawsuit, according to their attorney, Amber Thurman. She died in 2022 after experiencing complications from taking abortion pills. She traveled to the Piedmont Henry Hospital in Stockbridge to receive a dilation and curatage procedure to remove the remaining tissue from the terminated pregnancy. But hospital staff allegedly waited about 20 hours performing the procedure. High profile civil rights and personal injury attorney Ben Crump, you've seen this guy all over, is representing the family in their upcoming case against the hospital. Crump pinned blame for Thurman's death on the hospital, not Georgia's recent law that bans abortion after six weeks of pregnancy, Spectrum News reported. Quote, even under Georgia law, the doctors had a duty to act to save Amber, Crump said last week. She had taken the abortion pills. There were tissues left. There was no viable fetus or anything that would have prevented them from saving her life while she suffered. It had nothing at all to do with the Georgia abortion law. Thurman's death in August 2022 has since become the first known abortion death since the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs, with Democrats, including Vice President Kamala Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, citing her death as a result of restrictive Republican-backed abortion laws. Georgia's heartbeat law states that, quote, no abortion shall be performed if the unborn child has a detectable human heartbeat, except in the event of a medical emergency or medically futile pregnancy. And the law makes exceptions for abortions after the six week mark, including in the event of a medical emergency or medically futile pregnancy or a pregnancy through rape or incest, when the probable gestation age of the baby is less than 20 weeks. So they lie about Georgia. They lie about the abortion law and they keep using it because they know the media is either too stupid or too partisan to look. But unfortunately, so are Republicans and so are hosts and commentators on panels. One other thing, Tim Walls, to show you how extreme these people are, Tim Walls repealed the Born Alive Infants Act in 2023, along with other state restrictions on abortions in Minnesota. The law stated that a born alive infant as a result of an abortion shall be fully recognized as a human person and accorded immediate protection under the law. All reasonable measures consistent with good medical practice, including the compilation of appropriate medical records, shall be taken by the responsible medical personnel to preserve the life and health of the born alive infant. That was the law in Minnesota until Tim Walls signed a law specifically repealing the born alive infants protection language. In fact, five babies died after they were born alive due to a failed induced abortion in 2021, according to an annual report from the Minnesota Department of Health. That annual report is no longer released because Walsh ordered them not released. What do you think about that? I remember one of these so-called debate moderators said, when Donald Trump said, yes, they leave babies on the table to die, she said, uh, and for the record, that's never happened. Liar, liar, liar. What else would he do? Eliminated waiting periods. Eliminated parental notification. So Walls and Harris are extremists. Nowhere on the face of the earth with the kind of abortion practices that they are pushing or Schumer, the Democrat Party is pushing. Nowhere on the face of the earth that they exist. They never exer existed in the United States of America. And they take Roe v. Wade because they figure people are, are not going to read the decision. And they say, no, 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 we just want to put Roe v. Wade in place. No, they don't. Their proposed bill has nothing to do with Roe v. Wade. It is an extremist radical bill. They lie about immigration. They lie about abortion because Kamala Harris is a horrendous candidate, because Kamala Harris is an empty pantsuit, and because they have a billion dollars to throw around and they have an in-kind contribution of billions from a, from a uh, prophetite media to push their agenda. So maybe the reason abortion is the number three or number two issue is because they keep lying about it and scaring women. And so you women in the suburbs that the pollsters say are really leaning heavily towards Kamala Harris, do you like being lied to? Do you? Because she's a fraud and a phony. I'll be right back.